What up, family? It's Jason Robel from jasonrobel.com. That's Jason, W-R-O-B as in baby, E-L.com. Here today, because it's sushi day at lunchtime, kids. Now, this is, again, another classic recipe, totally old school from the beginning of my days in culinary school up at Living Light, learning how to make raw, vegan, fish-free sushi. Now, the best part about vegan sushi is that you don't lose any of the minerals, omegas, taste, or texture, because we're gonna use some fantastic superfood ingredients in addition to some very familiar recipe ingredients and fresh veggies. So let's dig in, shall we? So today's recipe we're going to be doing in three steps, you guys. The first thing we're going to do right now is we're going to make our spicy miso spread that's going to be slathered inside of our nori roll. So the first thing you want to do is just take a small glass or a small mixing bowl and add right around a quarter cup or so of uh, miso. In this case, we're actually doing a chickpea miso. So this is a soy-free miso. Then we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of our toasted organic sesame oil. Then I'm gonna add a little shake of smoked paprika. If you want it a little spicier, you could do like a chipotle pepper or a cayenne pepper. So just shake a little bit in there. Okay guys, so all you gotta do is take one chopstick and as you can see, just do a rough mix here of the sesame oil the um, smoked paprika and the miso. Now we're gonna take our freeze-dried 51% genuine wasabi. What's the other 50, what's the other 49%? Oh, it's horseradish and mustard. So we've got a 51% wasabi with 49% horseradish and mustard. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our freeze-dried wasabi powder and add a little bit to a glass again or a mixing bowl. And all you have to do is add a little bit of water to reconstitute this. So take a little bit of water Add it to your powdered freeze-dried wasabi. Take that other chopstick and mix like so. Okay guys, so you can see we've got a nice wasabi water mixture here. And then what I like to do is add a little bit of coconut aminos to the dipping sauce. Now this is gonna be a very similar texture to, texture, ooh, it's kind of fermented. A very similar taste and texture to a tamari or a namashoyu, but again, it's a soy-free option with that same nice salty flavor. Mm, can't wait to dunk a dunk a dunk in here. Yeah. So now it's time to start assembling our nori rolls. The first thing you wanna do is take a spoon and take a little bit of the spicy miso paste on the back of the spoon, and then we're gonna spread it like this, like this, like that. We're gonna spread. Next up, we're going to be putting some tri-color quinoa. This is a high-protein, gluten-free seed that we cooked for about 15 minutes, so this is a white, red, and black quinoa blend. And go ahead and take your spoon, and on top of the miso, Put a little bit of quinoa in your life. So next up, we're gonna be adding two veggies and two fruits to our sushi roll. We're gonna be doing some red bell peppers, carrots, cucumber and avocado, and you're like, j -Row, cucumber and avocado, yeah. Anything with an internal seed, botanists out there, biology experts, is technically a fruit. What I like to do is maybe just take a few thin strips, maybe two or four, depending how thick you want them, lay them down lengthwise here on the sushi roll, and then we'll do four strips of cucumber as well, four strips of carrot, and my personal favorite ingredient in sushi, always fresh organic avocado. Okay, and then what I love to do at this point is add a little bit of black sesame seeds to the top of my avocado avocados as the avocados are kind of wet and oily and slimy and have that nice buttery consistency. As you can see, the black sesame seeds just stick right to the avocado wedges. So the last thing we're gonna add into our roll is our Asian microgreens mix. So you could use microgreens, you could also use alfalfa sprouts, sunflower sprouts, any kind of bean sprouts, whatever you like. In this case, I just love the flavor and the spiciness of the Asian microgreens. Here's what you do to properly roll your own. You know what I'm saying? So here's what we do. We want to roll as we're using our forefingers to make sure the ingredients stay tightly tucked. The rear thumbs are rolling as I'm tucking. And then when we get to the edge here, what I like to do is use a little bit of lemon, and I actually like to take the lemon and help to seal the edge of the sushi roll here, the nori, by squeezing a little bit of lemon juice on the edge. And then when I get to the edge there, I like just to press down a little bit. Now the best way to cut a sushi nori roll is to actually take a small glass of water and then with each successive cut, you wanna make sure that you dip your blade back in the water to keep it well lubed. What I like to do at this point, guys, is plate my sushi, as you can see, and then take a little extra black sesame seed and just pinch a little smidgen 
on top of each cut piece of nori like this. So guys, thank you so much for sticking around and watching my seaweed nori roll recipe here today. My name is Jason Robel from jasonrobel.com. That's Jason, W-R-O-B as in baby, E-L.com. I also wanna thank Ultimate Superfoods and Ogeo for once again hooking us up with the authentic Japanese style superfood Flogio. So I think I've got about 55 more recipe rolls to make because I've got a lot of hungry people. Can you guys eat 55? Is that even humanly possible? We're gonna try here. Maybe our next vlog will be sushi eating contest. What do you guys think about that? That'd be fun, right? Eating contest? We can do sushi eating contest, banana eating contest, chocolate eating contest. Leave me a comment below on that if you guys wanna see a J. Ro Lolo blog on who can win the eating contest here. With that, I'm out of here, guys. Big fat plump-a-dump peaches your way. I gotta get these hands ready to roll, y'all.